Chain Reaction is a quilt that, um, designed by Lee Heinrich. It appeared in Quilt Maker's March-April 2012 issue. You can see it's an off-center X block, and it creates a really fun vertical design as, um, as you run down through with the chain effect and the different size diamonds that are created because of the off-center X. After looking at, Lee, at Lee's quilt, um, we sent that off to Quiltmaker's Scrap Squad, which is a group of women who create um, a pattern after it's gone to the printer, before it's seen in print, so that when the issue comes out, we can see um, a huge variety of what people have, how people have interpreted that pattern. And I want to show you a couple of quilts made from some of the Scrap Squad members for Chain Reaction. First is Bonnie Stapleton, and she has a teal background with pumpkin-colored chains running through her quilt. Melissa Radke really played with the color design in hers with stripe with the strips going from yellow to orange to red, back to orange, back to yellow in a diagonal setting. So she really played, paid close attention to her color arrangement as she was designing hers. And Donna Hanley has a white and black chain running through each of the vertical rows, and then she alternates black and red um, in the opposite, in the alternating rows. So you can see there's a huge variety of things that you can do with this chain reaction quilt. So after seeing Lee's quilt and after seeing what the Scrap Squad was doing, I, this was one that I really wanted to play with. Now in the original pattern, the strips are all two and a half inches, and that made me start looking at pre-cuts. And so here you can see I've got some Tonga treats from Timeless Treasures, and the two and a half inch strips come in a huge variety of colors, and obviously there's a whole bunch more out there. And you can also do the same thing um, just with cutting up your own scraps. So as I looked at the two and a half inch pre-cuts, I also wanted to look at the 10 inch square pre-cuts. So this packet has all 10 inch squares, and I wanted to use those for the background. But in the original pattern, you start with a smaller, about an eight by six inch rectangle. After you add the strips, you end up with an eight inch um, block. But I didn't want to take a pre-cut at 10 inch and trim it down smaller. So I calculated new dimensions, and that's what I'm going to show you today is how to make chain reaction with the new sizes um, all ready for pre-cuts. So let me show you what the, some, um, jump ahead and show you the finished blocks to show you the effect I was going for. And you'll see with the off-center X, in this case I've got a medium strip that's running through and creating a medium chain, and then I've got the dark one running through here. And so about half of my blocks, in this case 20, are gonna have dark on the bottom, and the other half are going to have mediums on the bottom. So as we, as we begin to make this, we're going to have to first divide our strips into mediums and darks in order to get started. So for my version of um, Chain Reaction, I'm using the pre-cuts. And the first thing I thought after I selected these is maybe I could do divide them into blues and greens. But there weren't enough. It didn't divide out equally. So then I wanted to look at them by value. So after opening it up and dividing them into, um, into lights or mediums and darks, um, the yellows, it was easy to see the two lighter yellows from the two darker yellows. Um, and here it was a little trickier. So I divided them out what I thought was the darker ones and what I thought were the lighter ones. And then what I did was take a picture and tr converted the picture to grayscale so that I could see um, where I needed to make some changes. When you take the color out, it sometimes is easier to see that value difference. And so then by rearranging some of these, some of these are actually lighter and some of these that are actually darker. And it, it can be tricky, especially with batiks, because you have such a variety of color happening um, on them. But by, by looking at it in grayscale, you can see where it's mostly, dark, mostly more medium and mostly more dark. And then I can take another picture, convert it to grayscale, and see that I actually have a much better division now between my mediums and my darks. And I'm not 100% convinced yet that my dark yellows and my medium yellows are going to play into this, but I'm keeping them in the mix for now because I want to see what happens when I start using them. So now the, the advantage of having the pre-cuts is that they're pre-cut, and so pre preparing them for um, for the actual use in the block becomes a whole lot easier because you have much less cutting to do. And let me show you how I cut these further. Um, for my new sizes from the original pattern, I want to cut, um, cut these strips into thirds. Because this block is made with more trimming, I don't have to have real precise sizing 
um, as I make these cuts. So I'm keeping the folded edge at one side and I'm just kind of aligning them on my, on my mat, using the lines on the mat. Um, so this one's at about half an inch further away and checking it at this end. And again, making sure that the folds are all on one side. If you were doing something where you needed precise two inch squares, you'd have to be a little more careful than I'm being. But um, I know that these strips are approximately 40 inches long. Um, you'll notice that in reality, if you come down here and take a look, in reality, they're all slightly different. So, but beca because of the trimming that we're doing as we make the blocks, I'm not worried about trimming my selvages first, and I'm not as concerned about um, the exact size on these. I want them to be about 14 inches, and so because I have the fold here, I can cut them seven inches long. And when these are opened up, now I have my 14 inch cut and I have three more or two more that are also about 14 inch. So now I can divide all of these mediums into one pile and I have all of my mediums pre-cut ready to use. And I will do the same thing with the darks and I did, we'll do the same thing with the yellows and kind of mix them in as well. So that's how you get your strips ready is cutting them, dividing them into your two color groups and then cutting them into 14 inch, approximately 14 inch um, um, strips. Next we're going to prepare the background squares. So they're pre-cut into 10 inch squares and we need to cut a line that's at a 30 degree angle. Well, let me show you first um, kind of a, a reminder about some high school geometry. When you have a 30 degree angle, the opposite angle is going to be 60 degrees and sometimes it's helpful to know that so that you can get an alignment for the right way that for the direction that you want to cut. If you are right-handed, you can align this 60 degree line on your ruler right along the edge of your fabric and you would cut right there and you've got a 30 degree line. If you're left-handed you would want to align the 30 degree line on your ruler on the edge and cut on this side. The difference this time though is that we're not cutting to the edge of the fabric at this point. We want to be one and a half inches away and on paper right now this is just a pretend one and a half inches. So now I want to align the 60 degree line still stays at the top of the fabric and now it's one and a half inches away and I'm going to cut on this side if I'm right handed. If I'm left handed I'm aligning at the edge of the fabric one and a half inches away and I'm going to cut on this side. So let me show you my, my version which is right handed. Um, because the, the ha it's hard to align a piece of fabric on a half inch and know for sure where it is. I used some painter's tape um, and just lined that up at the top and the bottom at the one half inch mark so that I've got a ha good half inch guide. So now I can come over to one and a half inches and I'm going to align the top edge of the ruler on the 60 degree line one and a half inches away from the edge of the corner. And that's the first cut to prepare the background squares. The good thing is, if you align your pre-cuts, your 10 inch pre-cuts, you can line several up at one time. In this case, I've got four here. Um, you can align those up next to your painter's tape, your 60 degree line, one and a half inches away. And that's where you want to be real fussy and make sure you're exactly one and a half inches away and that you're along the top edge and do your cut. And, and very quickly you can have all of your background um, squares cut and ready to go with all of your pre-cut strips. And then we're ready to start sewing. Okay, now we're going to get ourselves organized and actually sew some blocks. So for the first block with dark strips um, sewn in first for the, along the bottom of the X, I want 20 backgrounds that are all pre-cut and I want 20 dark strips and I want 20 medium strips. And I'm going to start with sewing a dark strip to the segment of the background that is cut at the closest, the one and a half inches. If you notice over here, this is longer than the one and a half that we cut. So these I'm going to set aside. I'll come back to them in a, in a little bit. I'm going to pick up a dark strip and my first background strip. Now, if you remember, when we trimmed, when we trimmed these strips, we left selvage on there. So there's selvage at this end. 
So when I'm putting sewing these on, I want to make sure I get plenty up here because I'm going to be trim. This is where I'm going to be trimming. So I put these two pieces together, sew a quarter inch seam along this edge, and then it will be ready to trim. So you're going to line, and I would go through and sew all of my strips to 20 of my dark strips to the 20 background strips, and then I would bring all of them over um, to cut, but I'm just going to show you one. So you're going to line the background up, and you're going to cut off that edge of the block, and you're going to do the same with that edge of the block. Then you're going to pick up your corresponding background piece, and I'm actually going to flip to this one. So now you have your trimmed um, dark strip to your, tr to your background. You're going to pick up the background piece that matches. See, this one's longer than the one and a half inch. And now you need to offset this by a quarter inch. And let me show you how to do that um, and give you some hints for how to practice that if that's new to you. The edge that you want to start at, and I'm going to go ahead and mark this so you can see what's going on. If you mark a quarter inch on your seam, this is where you would be sewing. You want this quarter inch to be lined up exactly like that. So when your needle comes in, when you put this into your sewing machine, your needle's going to be right there and it's going to nestle right into that spot. You're going to sew this and then when you get to the other end, it's going to be at the exact same thing, a quarter inch in here. If you're off, if you're sewing like this, you're going to have too wide um, of an area here and it's not going to align. If, you, if you're off this direction, it's also not going to align. When you get that perfect quarter inch um, offset, exactly like that when it's sewn, after you press it and open it up, it's going to align perfectly across that strip. So that's how you do the offset, quarter inch offset seam to get that background piece in place. And you can mark, you can mark this edge for as long as you need to until you're comfortable with it. But really what's key is, 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 is learning where that spot is so that when you put it into your sewing machine, your needle nestles right into that, um, where the two fabrics match. And so then you're gonna sew all of that. So now you're gonna have a pile of, of squares like this that are all sewn together like that. And we're gonna do another cut at 30 degrees. And again, you want to be careful. I'll show you, this is, this is how it was oriented the first time. We cut, if you remember, one and a half inches in on this side. We want to do the same thing, but we want to do it from this side. We want one and a half inches from here, and we want the 30 degree line going this way. So in this case, I'm going to turn the block over, align it to my painter's tape, make sure that I notice that it's one and a half inches on this side, so I want one and a half inches right there. Pick up my ruler, align the 60 degree line on the ruler, one and a half inches away from the edge of the fabric, and I'm going to cut. Now this one, I would do these one at a time. I wouldn't try to stack these because this, this wants to be pretty precise. Leaving this one against the edge, move the larger segment to the side, and you're going to cut one and a half inches away from this edge. And that's how you're going to insert the strip. And yes, I'm going to turn the ruler, the mat, so that I can make that slice. And you're just going to set this segment you trimmed away off to the side. So now you've got your, your two halves ready to insert your next, um, your medium strip. And again, if you've done all 20 of these, you keep them lined up so that, so that your strips and backgrounds are all in the same order. And again, I'm going to pick up the one that has the one and a half inch on this end with a medium strip. With the medium strip. And again, if I have salvage, I want to make sure it's out of the way. I'm going to line it up here, and I'm going to sew, sew that down. And after I press it, it's time to trim again. 
So I align that edge, trim off that, flip this over, trim this one off, and I have a trimmed block that's now ready for its second side. So I bring this side back over, and again, I'm going to offset by a quarter inch. I'm going to do it. Okay, so quarter inch there. The needle will nestle in there. I'll sew my quarter inch seam. And after I sew that quarter inch seam, press it open, and the block is finished. So the first, first batch of these will be 20 with the darker fabric sewn on first and the lighter fabric sewn in second. Then I'm going to do the same thing all over again with 17 backgrounds. And at this time, I'm going to put the medium strip in first, followed by the darker strip. Now, one other thing, when, when I did the first batch, I pressed everything to the center. Um, so all of the seams were pressed to, towards the strip when, for the 20 blocks with the dark fabric inserted first. When I did the second batch of 17 with the medium strip sewn in first, I pressed those with with um, the seam going away from the strip. And then that way, when I put these blocks together, they'll be able to, be able to nest together. Um, they'll nest together well. And so um, that's how you're going to get all 20, 20 blocks with the dark strips first and 17 blocks with the medium strip sewn in first. Now let me show you a couple pitfalls, because we all know what happens. Let me show you first. If you, if you don't get your seam offset by a quarter inch, this is where it's, it's going to mess up. In this case, the points were aligned instead of being offset. And you can see clearly now that this block is now not the same size because you're going to have to be trimming off here and here. Um, when you first pick up a strip of fabric to sew to a background segment, you want to make sure that you're at the, you've got the, um, the shorter portion of the fabric near the top, this, this edge. If you, and what you want to do, you'll do, do this once and check it to make sure. If you get these sewn in wrong, when you try to align this up, you don't have enough strip, you don't have enough of this strip to go all the way across. So you want to make sure that you get everything sewn at the, the top edge. The third pitfall, when you are making your second cut, you've got one and a half inches here. If you don't get the one and a half inches over here, you can see you don't get an off center block. And so I wanted to show you these pitfalls because they're things that we run into. Um, a couple of these I had to make to show you the mistake. This one, I made it all by myself without um, intending to make this one wrong. So there you have 20 blocks and 17 blocks prepared and ready for layout and final design decisions. So now I've broke the blocks to a design wall. And if you remember, 20 of the blocks have a dark strip in the background. I put a pin in the top corner of those so that I can keep, keep them straight as I'm rearranging them. And you'll notice the dark strip um, block is always with the larger portion at the top. The lighter strip block always has a smaller portion at the top. So here I've just put them up randomly. And you'll see the, the rows are staggered. So that means the second and fourth row once you know for sure where the blocks are going to land, then you're going to trim those blocks in half, both at the top and at the bottom um, on the second and fourth rows. But I like to put them up on a design wall so that I can see what's there and then, and then step back and start making some decisions about it. One of the things I noticed, because I was just putting them up randomly, I've got two backgrounds here that are the same, so I'm going to trade these two and just see what happens with that. And I like that better, but then you know what? Here I ended up with two next to each other um, on my darks. And that may be okay, but maybe I want to change that out. So we'll come down to this one and rearrange here again. Now one thing that's key when you're doing this is take lots of photos. As soon as you get something that you think you like, take a photo so you can record it before you make more changes. 
And now you can follow and see, okay, we've got the dark strip running down through, we've got the light strip running through. And again, take a step back and see, is there an area that's too dark or an area that's too light? One thing that I'm noticing is that this really light yellow against the pale background really tends to disappear, and I don't like that. So I'm going to take that block away and bring in a new block because I made a few extras. And then I can start to look at that and see, okay, is that all kind of working for me? And, and it's, it's okay. I've got another spot over here with um, the two darks next to each other. So this one doesn't have a pin. So I'll grab, nope, I'm not going to grab that one because that puts the lights together. We'll put this one down there. And put that one there. And I can spend a lot of time arranging and rearranging and playing with the blocks. Sometimes I'll put them on the wall like this and let it sit for a while, come back into the room another time and see, if it, see what it looks like after I've let it look, looked at it for a while. Um, one thing I'm starting to notice, you would, you would want to make sure in this case, by putting them up randomly, the yellows did get distributed pretty well. Um, and you have to look at it and decide, do I like those yellows? Do I want to keep them in? Um, another thing now that I'm noticing is that I do have a lot of the orange backgrounds. I'm starting to wonder what happens if I put all the orange backgrounds together and kind of stop paying attention to the darks and, and, and mediums and the crosses and just kind of play with the background so that the oranges are together and kind of moving out from, from orange out, dark to light backgrounds. So I'm going to start moving some orange backgrounds around and kind of bring them over here to one side. Now I kind of have the oranges happening. I've got some darker blues around them. I could bring some more blue up a little closer. And again, just kind of step back, take a look, and see. What do you think? At this point, there's no right or wrong. It's what you like. And so you might like them all scattered around randomly. You might like this background kind of centering in on the orange and then and then dispersing out to other colors. So um, this, is, this has just been a really fun way to play with these blocks. Um, I really enjoy this part of it when I get to the stage when the blocks are made and just kind of playing with it to see what it turns into. Let me go back and show you another Scrap Squad quilt at this point. This one was designed by Jackie Hughes. And if you remember all those pieces that we trimmed off from the center of our blocks, she took hers and incorporated them in her bolt, into her border. And it was a really fun way to use all these trimmings. You also could sew them together um, to create a, stri a panel strip for your backing. Um, at this point now, I'll take these blocks off the design wall. And after knowing for sure what, what arrangement I want on my colors, I'll make that final decision. Then I'll take them to the sewing machine um, to sew them together. One more thing I want to point out to you is as you sew them together, make sure that you are aligning the strips um, next to each other more closely than the edges. Once you have your vertical rows sewn together, if you're off a little bit on the edges, that's when you want to do a final trim on your edges. But, so pay attention to um, where the strips are joining as you, as you sew the rows together. And here you'll see what my final chain reaction is. It's a real fun, easy block. has a couple fussy moments, but I showed you how to take care of those. And um, I hope you enjoy your chain reaction as much as, as I've had fun with mine.